The other types of movement disorders is dyskinesia. It's an abnormal, uncontrollable involuntary movements. There are many different types of dyskinesia with symptoms that range from minor, just like tics, very simple, to full body movements. It's associated with brain injury, common issue for after antipsychotic medications or on long term use of L dopa, methylmagnet, levodopa, and the treatment of Parkinson's disease. And the commonest were of types of dyskinesia, tardive dyskinesia, tardive dyskinesia, which is commonly seen in patients with Parkinson's disease using long term levodopa. In our clinical practice, we used to see a cases with oculogary crisis or torticollis, especially in young, male or female, common in female, using anti-emetic drugs, for example, metoclopramide, blasil, or prochlorpyrazine, the lestimetil, which I feel bad when I high medications, so I don't mean an oculogary crisis, or torticollis, with that dyskinetic movement, type of dystonia. The second or the other important muscular or movement disorder is myoclonus, myoclonus, which is a brief and rapid, irregular, isolated, random jerk. It's a rapid, irregular, random jerk of muscle, of muscle groups. This is a physiological at the onset of sleep. Hypnic jerk, and say me a hypnic jerk. This is a myoclonus or myoclonic jerk. Like in Elihimna, who will myoclonus Elihir in patients with cerebral cortex disease, like those with epilepsy, and say me a myoclonic convulsion or myoclonic epilepsy. The other movement disorder is epilepsy or fit or convulsion, commonly or myoclonus, myoclonus. This perioral movements. Nurja has said dyskinesia, this is example of tardive dyskinesia in patients with Parkinson's disease using this medications. This disorder also involves the neck muscles, which should be scored on section 7 of the examination. For now, movement of the mouth. Just the perioral movements. Notice the frequency, also the amplitude. That is to say, the size of the movements. Some your lip or mouth is marking. This perioral movements. This is example of. Patients with myoclonus epilepsy, sudden jerky movement, involuntary. This is epileptic patients, he developed myoclonus. Fit is abolished now. Other abnormal muscle or movement disorder is tics. Tics are a stereotyped repetitive movement. Either very common such as blinking, head shaking or shoulder shrugging. Unlike dyskinesia patient may be able to suppress them. Either have مثل voluntary movement like in the way you say with الناس. Although only for a short time, isolated tics are simple which become repeated unnecessarily common in childhood and usually disappear. يعني أطفال عندهم مرات عادات يحركون يعني حلقهم أو يحرك خشمة أو حركات بيدة أو بشتفة. This is ticks. This is ticks, which is repeated unnecessarily. The other important movement will myokinia, which is a persistent, twitchy, rhythmical movement, may affect periorbital muscles. As involuntary, من عندنا facial nerve involvement or irritation involvement the eyelid muscles contraction, typically involve the lower eyelid, also called hemifacial spasm. فإذا lower إذا صارت the unilateral part of the face سميه hemifacial spasm. It's a type of myokinia. Cramp, 
ايضا very common يصير عندنا كل احنا it's a spasm of part or muscle especially calf muscle occur in normal people or in heat stroke cram مرات تقعد من النوم فد سيفير سبازم سبيشالي ان ذا كاف مسل ات مي بي ديوباثيك اور ديو تو هيت ستروك ان هايبوناتريميا اور ايفن هايبوماجنيسيميا تي تاني ايضا بنورمال موفمنت اوكور ديو تو هايبوكالسيميا اور الكالوسيس وين ذا بيشنت هاف كابو بيدال سبازم طبعا هنا عندنا تو تيست تروزيت تيست اند تشيفوستيك تيست تو تيست فور تي تاني and hypocalcemia. Hemifacial myokinemia is another disorder of the seventh nerve, but in this case, probably due to brain This is myokinemia. This is a patient with multiple sclerosis, and what you can see are continuous undulating fasciculation-like contractions in the distribution of the seventh nerve. Now, this disorder is different than the benign obicularis myokinemia, which I think all of us have experienced during times of stress, that little twitching movement that you can feel under the eye. The difference in this disorder is that the movements spread to other areas of the seventh nerve. So could that affect just around the eye. Around the eye and even now watch as we move downward, you can see these movements in other areas around the mouth. That are subserved by the seventh nerve. Muscles supplied by seventh cranial nerve. You need to think about intrinsic lesions of the brain stem, multiple sclerosis, tumor for example. Look at these fasciculation like this fascicular movement, this myokemia. Continuous rippling undulations of the muscles subserved by the seventh nerve. Here we're shining light obliquely on the skin and it creates shadows. This is very similar to the technique that's very useful to bring out and show fasciculations in, for example, amyotrophic lateral sclerosis. Using room light that's... Pleasure the patient with hemifacial spasm, unilateral movement, contraction of the muscles supplied by the facial nerve, orbicularis oris, they have hospital examination of the facial nerve. Blepharospasm. Okay, another movement disorders. Blepharospasm. Contraction around the eye. Repetitive. Now look to your right. Look to your left. Look up. Normal ocular movement. Look down. All the muscles are Look perfect to walk. Close your eyes really tightly now. Open them up wide. Thank you.